Good morning. Welcome to Morning Moments. I'm so glad that you uh, took the time to join us today. I have a filmmaker. She is a producer, director, uh, screenplay writer, actress, and you, you, you name it in film, she does it because she has her own film uh, production company and she'll be telling you about it. Uh, we've tried to connect a long time ago and, and uh, things just didn't work out, but we finally came back and I believe it's God's timing right now. Laura Ann Heaton Gray, uh, you've probably seen her on stuff and you've probably heard her name in the industry. She's been in the film industry for quite a while, but uh, uh, welcome Laura Ann to Morning Moments. Thank you for having me. Tell me, what do you do and why do you do it? You know, Andy, I do what I do because not only is it my calling, but I do what I do to help people and to reach people where they are through the art of storytelling um, to help people to not only grow, but to find restoration. Um, I've been doing a lot of public speaking lately, um, aside from filmmaking, and, and that has been the, the topic that seems to just keep coming back to me on my heart over and over again, is that I need to help people find restoration and redemption. Um, I have a very, very assorted past, and I feel like God said, you know, we you did this thing, you did these many things, and now it's time to turn all of that around and help people to discover that it doesn't matter what you've done, it doesn't matter where you've been, it doesn't matter what you've said, um, God still loves you and he, he wants you to be in his family. He wants to bring you to that place where you find peace and not only ask for his forgiveness, but forgive yourself for the things that you have done and that you have been through. And it, it, it's just, I know that that's what I'm supposed to be doing um, in all the different areas that I work in ministry, whether it's film or public speaking or one-on-one -on -one coaching with actors or crew members. Um, is, is to help people because people are hurting in this world and there are people that we would never even guess what is in their past that we see every single day and we are the light of the world and so we can be that shining light to them to, to help them see you know if, if I gave all of this over to God and I, you know, started living for him and, you know, forgave myself for those things and let them go, you know, what amazing things are going to come to me. And then I can go out and share with other people what I have now found. And so it just becomes, you know, a ripple effect in the way that you affect people and um, help people in their lives. And I, I know that that's what I've been called to do is to help people who are hurting help people who um, feel like there really is no hope or they're not good enough for anything or anybody because of the past that holds them back. And, and you do that through the story. One of the greatest, if not the, the greatest storyteller of all times, Jesus himself. Right. And he would say, here in my hand is some seeds. I got a story about the seeds. Uh, let me give you a story about this. And he would tell the stories and captivate audiences. And it's the story that draws people in. And that's right. the art of that storytelling, isn't it? Oh, definitely. Definitely. And there's, there's so many stories. I've, I've had a couple of people reach out to me this week with their, their stories. Um, this happens a lot. Um, but this week alone, I've had two different people reach out to me with their stories that I never would have thought of. And I know that God brought those people into my path. Um, and like I said, you just never know the stories that people have and the way that God can use those stories to reach other people. Um, even, you know, 
I primarily work in the faith-based industry, but you know, some of these stories are going to reach people in the secular genre as well. And I think, you know, that's the ultimate goal is to reach the world, not just the choir per se. And so, yeah, there's so many stories out there that, that bring that hope um, to people. And it's just amazing how God uses them to tell those stories. Now, only in cre creating your own studio, you have to step back and look at the big picture. And uh, not only in front of the camera, but behind the camera and all the pieces that, that uh, there's a lot of moving parts, isn't there to put, put together? Too many. <laughs> <laughs> oh. How does, how does your experience help you in, in why you do what you do? We talked about that, but what is that deep calling that you have on do for sharing the gospel of Christ? How does that motivate you on a day-to-day -day producing versus directing versus acting? Uh, well, it, it's one thing, it keeps you humble. Um, <laughs> and, um, you know, in, in I was a direct, uh, sorry, I misspoke. I was a performer actor before everything. And so I, I feel like that's a good place for a lot of people who are directing and producing to begin because you understand um, what it's like on that side. And it makes you a more effective leader as well. Um, and especially, you know, like in a ministry, because you, you know, where the people have been, you know, where they've started because you were there yourself. And I feel like it, it, it's important to be able to relate to people, um, in that way. So, yeah. Um, when you look at opportunities, it's, sometimes it's very difficult to, make, to, to choose and uh, which opportunities, uh, sometimes the best opportunities are financial and other times the best opportunities is ministry. Uh, how do you draw that line? What, what's the difference? That line is um, completely uh, decided by God. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, you know, I have, I have people who pitch me things all the time and depending on what their needs are, you know, sometimes I immediately, I'm like, oh, I'm not in a position for that. You know, I'm not that kind of producer that is going to raise your money or, you know, I'm, I'm not that kind of this or that. And I'm like, eh, I'm just not in that place, but I always make sure that I pray about those opportunities that come to me because you know, somebody who is completely at, at rock bottom as far as their knowledge base and how to do what it is they want to do. I, I've been there and I would have, you know, wanted somebody to be like, I'll help you. Um, and I did. I had a lot of mentors in this industry when I was first starting out that, you know, took time to help to cultivate me and, and give me the knowledge base that I needed in order to be successful in the industry. And so I, I don't ever disregard those opportunities without, you know, going to prayer about it because, you know, God may be calling me to help someone come from, I have this script, I don't know what to do with it. Um, to being able to produce something. And so, um, yeah, it's, it's totally a God thing. You know, it, it, I have to pray about those opportunities to discern, you know, what is it that God wants me to do versus what I want to do. And I've had a lot of opportunities come my way that were amazing opportunities um, to go, you know, out to LA or Canada or whatever that I wanted really bad really wanted them like you know the pay is great I get to go be in LA or I get to go be in Canada or you know Britain or wherever um but God was like mm -mm -mm, that one's not for you um we actually for the Christian worldview we just finished doing a 48 hour film I uh 
it was the Tennessee Valley Christian filmmakers who did it and I was talent on that and um, it was a, a, a film called Oops Wrong Door and it's about the opportunities that come our way that um, are not meant for us that we we're chasing after them but they're not meant for us and so you know the, the only way that you can take those opportunities that are meant for you is to make sure that God is on board and it's something that God put in your path and not something that you sought out yourself. I, I just saw that film. I, at least I saw a, a, a flyer for that just, just the last one or two days on, on Facebook. And I go, interesting title. I, I, my fingers still hurt from me trying to stick my hand in the door that God was slamming. And uh, <laughs> sometimes that happens. God says, get your fingers out of the door. Get your foot out of the door. I'm closing it. And you're right. trying to stick your fingers in it. So that happens a lot. Oh, God. And and I I think you said something that's real important. You said a lot of things that's important. But one of the things I, I'm reminded of, God knows our heart. It's up to us to hear his voice. And he knows really the heart that he's given us and the heart that you have for the storytelling. But by listening to his voice, that's where, you know, on a day to day basis, where mm -hmm. you're supposed to be. And it only comes by prayer and it only comes by knowing God and listening to him instead of every day doing your own thing. Right. Paul tells us I die daily. That's what we're supposed to do. Today I get up and today I die. I die. Right. right. And it, it, it's so hard sometimes too, yeah. because, you know, there are these things that you really want to do, or, you know, maybe you're having a hard time discerning, you know, God, is this from you? Or is this something that just happened to come in my path, maybe to distract me from what that next opportunity is that I'm going to turn down because I'm doing this instead. And so it, it, it's definitely challenging sometimes because, you know, you feel like God may put something in your path that actually isn't in your path. And it's made to look all bright and shiny um, to distract you. Um, and so, yeah, it, it's definitely hard to discern sometimes, but it's, it's very important that we just be patient and wait on God's voice to give us that certainty because he's not going to let us second guess. He's, if we ask him, is this for me or is this not for me? He's going to give you an answer one way or another, whether it's speaking directly to you or showing you by some other fashion, you know, maybe popping up that little red flag that, that happens because of a circumstance, you know, within that thing that you want to do. And so, yeah, we just got to be patient and, and wait on God's answer for those things and not chase after them just because the door wasn't shut. Yeah, so often whenever there's uh, choices in life, it seems like there was two or three choices that was given to me. I'm going, God, why don't you just give me one choice? He goes, it's not a choice if it's a selection of one. I'm going to put two or three things in front of you and, and you to, for you to know what to do, you got to know my heart. And I go, okay, God. And that's where <laughs> you surrender and say, God, I need to hear from you. If you sincerely want God to, to speak to you, he doesn't want to, he doesn't want to hide his will from you. It's not a right. mystery, but sometimes it's the, it's the act of seeking. We don't pray so God can hear us. We pray so we could hear God. Mm -hmm. God. And, and one, one thing too is sometimes we feel like those doors have opened when really they haven't. And, yeah. um, you know, we get distracted by the things of the world. So I've been chasing after, not chasing after, that's the wrong thing. I have been feeling for a very long time, uh, eight years now, of course, um, that what I'm doing now is what I was supposed to be doing. And so I've been, you know, seeking those ways of, of making all of that happen and, you know, building a, a resume and getting my name out there and, and all of that. But it just felt like it wasn't going anywhere. And I was like, you know, I, God, you called me to do this, but nothing's happening. Like, I don't understand why you called me here when nothing's happening. And then in the fall of, of 20, uh, 
no, in the fall of, yeah, in the fall of 2020, um, I ended up getting very sick. I had to have uh, three different surgeries um, on my intestinal tract. I had some uh, malignant polyps, so they had to take all of that out. I had 18 of them, and then I had polyps on my um, oh, gallbladder. And at that point, I felt like it was over. One, I didn't even know if I was going to live. And I'm going, why have I gone through all of this to die this way or to, you know, all of the money that I had but hopeful to put into an actual production company and get this brick and mortar, you know, all went to bills and medical, you know, doctors and hospitals and all of this. And I felt like all was lost. I was completely depressed. And I, I don't want to say I was mad at God, but I was very frustrated. And something happened and um it, it all happened because of a tiktok actually that went viral and um because that tiktok went viral a, a lady from canada reached out to me and um was like how can i help you i've been following you for a little while um and i see everything that's been going on with you and i, I want to help you um the the tiktok was about an oven that had broken because of my daughter doing a TikTok where she busted the oven on accident. Um, but, you know, at that point I was two weeks out from my latest surgery and I was just over it. <laughs> and so I posted this TikTok about, you know, just being over life in general. And I was so frustrated. I didn't know what to do. And we got to be friends and um, she you know, was asking me other things about my life. And I was telling her, you know, what my hopes and my dreams were and what I thought I was supposed to be doing with my life. And she was like, do you have a business plan? And I was like, yeah. And she's like, well, I might have some people who'd be interested in, in investing. And I was like, well, okay. So I sent her that, that plan and turns out uh, she was that person who was interested in investing. And um, she put up the entire startup for my company, including everything, you know, all the gear that's here, um, you know, rent and, and all of that kind of stuff to get us started. And, you know, what's funny is I went on Babby Mason's show seven years earlier and, you know, told Babby Mason that this is what I feel like my calling in, in life is. And we signed the lease on this building seven years to the day of that show. And, you know, seven years is what the representation of completion. Yes. And so I was like, you know, okay, I get it now. You know, you have been doing all of these things in my life to get me to this point now um, where I can effectively um, do what you're calling me to do. And so doors aren't always closed when they think they are. I'm going to put down below. Uh, in the in the websites or in the contacts, uh, especially on YouTube and Facebook, your links and how they could get a hold of you in the film industry, and maybe you, you've got questions for for uh, Laura Ann. Uh, but more important than just the contacts and see what she's done and what she's doing, I want you to be praying for her. God's got a, a plan and hope for her. Be praying for her and. Uh, uh, so that it, we and pass this interview on to, to someone else. Thank you so much for being with us in Morning Moments. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us and please come back for some more Morning Moments.